Hey everybody, happy Saturday. I just wanted to drop in really quick and just thank you all for really excellent forum posts, great thinking, really um, good argumentation, good clarity, also good charity when you had disagreements. Um, it's really helpful and I think everyone would benefit uh, from just browsing through the threads that you haven't seen yet. Uh, a couple of, just a, like a highlight or two, uh, I want to say it was maybe Emmanuel's post on um, the word Catholic. Uh, actually, really, really cool. A good thread um, developed there. And one of the things I just wanted to mention was that um, as Protestants, and Fuller does get the occasional Roman Catholic student, so that does happen. But generally, as a Protestant evangelical seminary, um, we sometimes maybe don't know exactly what's going on in the Catholic Church. And I just wanted to highlight for you um, that... Traditionally, yes, the Roman Catholics did in fact say that Protestants and Greek Orthodox were, um, you know, outside of the uh, one holy, uh, one holy apostolic and Catholic Church. Um, but in Vatican II, that changed. There's a document that was ratified. Um, it's called the Dogmatic Constitution Lumen Gentium. That's uh, Latin for Light of the Nations. Uh, L-U-M-E-N space G-E-N-T-I-U-M and Lumen Gentium actually goes uh, uh, quite a ways towards sort of incorporating um, non-Roman Catholic congregations and churches into participating in the true church. Now they still say that we've got most stuff wrong but they, they the point is that the spirit moves in such radical ways that even those not uh, receiving Eucharist and not under the shepherd, shepherding of the Pope still can have um, a measure of, of God's truth and grace in their lives. That's a really big deal historically. Uh, as you are probably aware, wars have been fought to keep Catholics and Protestants um, away from each other. So just a point there, um, the Roman Catholic Church officially is a lot more ecumenical than we sometimes uh, might give it credit for as Protestants, which isn't to say that there aren't plenty of Catholics who disagree with Vatican II. And you'll, uh, I have a friend who, um, she is just, uh, yeah, she, she's hoping I can get into purgatory, um, but she's worried. So, that is true. Uh, some other things that came up, a lot of you um, talked a lot about... Um, Stuff like uh, homo usias, uh, same substance, or true God from true God. Uh, every one of those threads is valuable because it just helps you think uh, critically about what, when you start to think about it, seems really self-contradictory. The Trinity is a weird idea, and it's it's a big deal in theology because it's completely unlike anything that any other uh, religion confesses. Uh, and the Church has gone to extraordinary lengths to describe things in Trinitarian terms that um, uh, ultimately can make sense. So uh, I really loved how, how you all, a lot of you, made you know the, the sort of uh, examples you're given when you're first a Christian. You know, the egg or water or... Um, I think Chris had one I hadn't heard, the, uh, the, the weave and the thread of fabric. I thought that was really cool. But I also really appreciated the fact that everyone kind of acknowledged that, yeah, those, those images will get us, you know, only so far. Because what we're dealing with is ultimately divine mi mystery. It's, it's a very strange idea. And one of the major uh, themes in theology nowadays is robust Trinitarianism. Um, I think I posted in a response to something, I want to say it was Willie, maybe it was Tony put up, about... Um, you know, how the spirit sort of gets back seat. Uh, Christocentrism is a term that came up in the 20th century to describe a lot of Protestant and Western theology. It was all about Jesus, all about Jesus. And someone, you know, once the Pentecostal Charismatics came around, once the churches in the Global South, like in Africa, started having a voice, um, once the Greek, Greek Orthodox Church joined in ecumenical conversation, all three of those groups were saying, hey, what about the spirit? The spirit's kind of a big deal, guys. Um, the Trinity isn't, there, there's, it's not like one's better than the other. They're all co-equal. They're all substance of God. Um, and they're interrelated and they have different roles and tasks, um, but they're of one unified will, one essence. So if we're only talking about Jesus, we're missing out on a huge portion of the truth of who God is. 
And uh, so that was a big deal in the 20th century. Uh, that actually played a large role in Lumen Gentium that I just talked about. And now uh, theology is really making a move towards thinking and speaking Trinitarianly, being very careful about how we speak about God, acknowledging that uh, God's triune nature, um, it matters. And we don't, we're not able to understand what God has done and who God is unless we are able to describe his actions uh, in terms of the work of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. So um, that's a really healthy a way to start thinking and, and speaking. And as you're working with your congregations or your parachurch organizations, the more that you can speak and think Trinitarianly for your people, the more you'll get them to consider in ways they probably haven't the depths of the mystery of the Godhead. And that will, of course, hopefully, I mean, ideally, would inspire worship and would inspire uh, humility and would inspire greater acts of self-giving service. So those are just some thoughts. Uh, really, just a wonderful, um, wonderful conversation. I'm going to, at some point, talk about, I want, maybe it was Elizabeth's post. Uh, she talked a little bit about, um, I think it was Elizabeth, but there was a question about, um, well, I think she was responding to somebody else, but she said something like, um, uh, how do we, you know, when we talk about being apostolic, you know, as Protestants, doesn't, don't we say in order to be apostolic, we go to scripture? Um, and I have quite a bit to say about that, uh, which I'll probably dump on you next week. I'll check with the syllabus and make sure that's the right time to do it. But at some point, do expect a um, micro-lecture about uh, the rule of faith, regula fide, um, and the role of the tradition in the interpretation of Scripture. So that's coming up at some point, maybe next week, maybe the one after, I don't know. All right, thank you guys for listening. Um, and if you have questions, of course, please tweet me or email me. Um, and, yeah, also feel free to tweet uh, with the hashtag S, uh, Tom's st 511 It's helpful because your questions pop up so that everyone can see them rather than just keeping them between you and me with the email. Um, yes. All right. See you guys later.